but William Nylander is now um, the highest paid Toronto Maple Leaf uh, for now because uh, things <laughs> things will always change. He just uh, they've announced their new ninety two million dollar eight year deal for one of the big four. Not, by the way, ninety two million dollars in the contract. $69 million in signing bonuses over the period of time of the eight-year deal, which is unbelievable. The, the ripple effect of this one, not only through the Maple Leafs, but through the rest of the National Hockey League is going to be interesting, Richard, because Leon Dreisaitl in Edmonton is on a very team-friendly deal at just over $8 million, and some would argue that Leon Dreisaitl is a better player. Yeah, by the way, NBA guys and top MLB players, they la they laugh at these little salary numbers these tiny right. little numbers um i, I disagree with bob uh, not surprisingly um you have to sign elander to me i mean the guy's a, he's a top 10 guy in scoring he's 27 he's a foundational piece yeah of course you wish that like the the, the number wouldn't be the number but that's what the guy is worth and i think you have to sign him and then what happens john we were talking about this a little bit off air is you hope, if you still want them, that Tavares takes some kind of, you know, hometown discount or really, really reduced contract. And then the big question is Marner. And I don't really have a great answer for that is what's going to happen to Mitch Marner heading forward. But what's the alternative? You lose Nylander, you trade him. I mean, you're, you can't get great. You can't get equal value. Well, well here, here's the, here's the thing, uh, Richard. William Nylander has been their best player this year and probably 100%. has been their best player for the last two years. When you consider that it's, you know, we've forgotten it's, you know, the Austin Matthews 60 goal season was a while ago. now. So w William Nylander, um, you know, gambled on himself, took a chance in not signing uh, offers early in the season, uh, went to Sweden, became a superstar on and off the ice in Sweden when the, when the Leafs went there and has just skyrocketed since then. It's a, it's really a, a very good story when you think about a player buying into himself. If you're a team in the National Hockey League, which the Toronto Leafs are, yeah. you have to look at this as a team, not as a bunch of individual players. The Maple Leafs have four guys now making more than $10 million a year. How many other teams in the NHL have that? How many? I don't think there are, I don't think there are any. Exactly. How many Stanley Cups have they been close to? Forget one, but been close to during that time period. That McCowan, McCowan gets the award for the first rhetorical question of the show. The answer, of course, is none. None. So what is the point? What is the point of giving a guy 12 million bucks to be a part of a team that has done nothing? Nothing. You take well, that 12 million and buy at least two high-quality defenseman you can do that my, with that my 12 million my counter would be this is not the guy to get rid of this is the guy to sign and then if you want i by the way i, I wouldn't pursue bob's strategy but if one does pursue bob's strategy to me that has to be tavaris marner and not neeland right. with john i like the guy in the last two years has proven to be either your best or second best player so i don't I, care i don't care so, so I'm Bob, not saying so, you're necessarily wrong, but you have to do it when the opportunity arises. Well, that was right now. Exactly, exactly. You had to get rid of them when oh. the opportunity so, came. So, so, so let me get this straight. You would have traded William Nylander. Yes, hundred percent, a hundred percent. Bob ran, he ran OG Ananobi out of town, and now he's trying to run William Nylander out of town. I, well, I was well, he's been, try, he's been trying to run <laughs> he's been trying to run Nylander out of town for about five years. Yes, he has, since I was on the air. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's but fair. I, I you, you know, Bob, I, I understand your logic of the four guys over 10 million. Tavares and as Richard mentioned, Tavares is gonna come off the books next year. Exactly. Um and and so I, I do think that this brings up the question of if Tavares resigns, it will have to be a really team friendly deal. And I think he's smart enough to do that. And then the then the question mark is is in fact Mitch Marner. And what happens with Marner? And does Marner fit into the long range plan with this hockey club? I because I, I, I and I think that I think that it's 
I, I think he, he has. I think he's pivoted from you know doing thinking your thought way uh, thought process about Nylander, and now I think it's becoming Marner. What are we talking about Marner for? We're talking about Marner, who's under contract for what another year, two years. Well, the next the, the next conversation will start July the first. Is when do they give Marner the extension? Extension, right? <laughs> exactly. Well, look, but the, but here's the, the good the good thing is the cap's going to go up, so you do get a little bit of in theory you get a little bit of relief there. And yeah, but Austin Matthews and, my, and William Nylander have already taken all that extra. <laughs> no, I understand that. I mean the 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 problem for the Maple Leafs has been the problem as we now know for five, six, seven years is they they. They have, all the money and four players. That's right, the but they but that's it. Like there, there's no they've committed to that. And so what are you gonna do? You think they should keep committing to it? It's I been think, a failure. I think, I think it has only, been a failure. I agree. Nice. They're only they're only out is when the Tavares contract comes up. That's that's the, an, that's, that's, that's that's the out. That's a chicken shit out. That's three. What then, why then why is out. why is it chicken shit? Yeah. Because they only they would only do it because the contract expires. They would be proactive in this, and they should have been proactive in the last three or four years. They had a gutless general manager who believed that this thing that he had put together would work, and it didn't. And you now have a general manager who I think is a smart guy, but he has done the same thing that the previous GM did. And I think that's I think it's a hundred percent wrong, a hundred percent wrong. But 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 the 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 issue isn't you know contracts you know too many contracts. It, the issue is the shell game that the that the salary cap system forces you to do. Well, whatever that's, you do, what you got to do. Not, but, but it can't. They be haven't done ever. it, John. Well, but a lot, again, like the the presumption of all this is. That if you dealt one of these guys, if you dealt Nylander or you dealt Barner, you're obviously not dealing Matthews. And nope. Tavares is not being dealt because you're not nobody's gonna take them. You have to hope that whatever defensemen come in are ultimately better producing than Nylander. And I think that's just too big a risk because you have a known quantity who is now a top ten player. I would not well, you have four guys making ten million plus and a hockey team that Probably won't like the playoffs, but probably will be out in the first round again. How does that make sense? What because, are you trying to do with this team? Are you, you trying to win or are you trying to give, give guys money? They're ham the defense that is inept. I'm just saying, I'm just, they, Correct. Have, they yes, I, I, they need better defense, but no question. But they have, and how do you get that when you're out of the salary cap? You they don't. Have made, they have made their choice already. I mean, that they've just, they have, well, totally I mean, this, they're making the same choice. Five, six, seven years in a row. And it's been wrong five, six, seven years in a row. That's all I'm saying. You guys are crazy if you think that the Nylander should be signed. Should have been signed. I got nothing against one of Nylander. And he's a pretty good hockey player. But you cannot keep going down this road paying these same four guys this ridiculous amount of money. You cannot. It is stupid, beyond stupid. It's my, embarrassing. My, <laughs> I like the feisty Bob. The uh, and my counter is that the the core four is not the core four once the Tavares contract ends, and you just have to wait it out. I well, not stupid. You got to be proactive. You know, and, you, if trade, you're a you trade, you trade, you job. trade Nylander, and the high flying <laughs> offense that you've had is a very very different offense. Be careful. Well, I mean, they have. They, so they, what? They're going to have. They're going to have some big issues to decide this summer, anyway, because you know, they, you know, they've got a they've got a guy on a, a one year deal and Tyler Bertuzzi making five million dollars that I guarantee is not going to want a pay cut. They've they've they they've got some issues, and I suspect that we will not see this core roster when the Maple Leafs come to training camp next year. Because I think this is this is now we're finally to, to Bob's point about Brad Treliving, I think we're starting to see Brad Treliving's team now, and I think that one of the cornerstones of that, and and Brad has made this obvious now, is William Nylander. 
And then we'll have to figure out what goes on in the next six or seven months, no matter what happens, what happens with the Maple Leafs in the postseason, no matter what happens.